the pineapple. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, tender, smoky, buttery, peppery, herby, delicious smoked turkey breast. Coming up. If you go to any Texas barbecue joint, you're likely gonna find the Texas Trinity of brisket, ribs, and sausage. But if there was ever a fourth contender to make that lineup, it would have to go to smoked turkey. Juicy, buttery, delicious. If you never had it, you definitely gotta check this out. Knife roll video coming real soon. Don't you worry. So I just picked this uh, here turkey breast up at the grocery store. And I'm gonna pat it dry. There's really not too much to do on these big old turkey breasts, except we're gonna take off the skin. And that's just because the skin tends to get a little rubbery. There's a lot of fat underneath it that's gonna kind of render out and then you'll have skin that slides off and turkey that has no rub or smoke on it. So it's best for presentation to take it off. And you can save this, throw it in your uh, next batch of turkey stock or chicken stock, render it down, get some crispy turkey skin, something like that. Now this turkey breast obviously is a little mangled, which is, Pretty unfortunate, but I'm just gonna trim this off and we'll cook it in two separate pieces. But that's about all we're gonna do. Now we're gonna throw this into a brine overnight and then we will cook it tomorrow. First thing you wanna do for this brine is eyeball just about as much water as you can fit in a vessel to not overflow once you put the turkey in. Say something funny. <laughs> so for this brine, we're gonna go with about a 5% salinity. So I weighed out this water and I took 5% of that and now I'm gonna add that amount of weight of kosher salt. Now you could do the whole boil a quart of hot water, dissolve your salt in it that way, and then add ice, but that just gets confusing. And if you stir this up enough, whisk it up enough, all the salt will dissolve. But it's time to add some other flavors. You could totally just go with salt water and it would come out nice and juicy and tasty, but I like to throw some herbs in there because you might as well. Thyme sprig, sage leaves, beautiful rosemary. And also for a little bit of spice, I'm gonna throw in some uh, arbol chilies, some white peppercorns. In they go. <laughs> I'm also gonna throw in some crushed garlic, but first I need to go get my garlic crusher. Oh, there it is. What we're doing here is just giving it a light crush to uh, release the Alice and it's a two part. Oh wait, that's the wrong YouTube, Brad. Sorry. In it goes. One other thing I like to do for brines for chicken or turkey is to add some acidity. Kind of mimic the same effects that buttermilk has. And that can come in any form, whether it's vinegar or citrus juice or anything like that. Today I'm gonna go with some lemon juice. I'm gonna go with about 5% by weight, same as the salt. And what that's gonna do is add some brightness, add some acidity, it's gonna help tenderize the meat and make sure everything comes out tasting super delicious. Now that we got this brine all made up, it's time to throw our turkey in and let it sit in the fridge overnight. Beep. Alrighty, I'll see y'all tomorrow to smoke this thing off. Beep. Nice and aromatic. I'm just gonna pat these dry, add a little more seasoning, and then it'll be time to throw them on the pit. Because this has already been brined, we don't need to add any more salt. So we're just gonna top it off with a little bit of black pepper, 16 mesh black pepper, link in description down below. And we're also gonna hit it with a little bit of granulated garlic. It's gonna help with the color as well as add some nice flavor. I already did the underside, so now all we need to do is throw it on the pit. On the smoker she goes. And we're gonna rock right around 275, maybe upwards of 300 degrees for the next three, four hours until this reaches an internal temperature of about 155 degrees. This would also be a great time to add any other herbs or whatever rubs you like. So it's been about two hours so far and this turkey breast is cooking along real nice. It is rocking right around 140 degrees, getting some really nice color on it. So to help add some flavor and some much needed fat, we're gonna add some clarified butter and it's really easy to make. So what we're gonna do is just get some butter in a pot. I've got about a pound and a half here of butter that we're just gonna melt down. Nice color, getting nice and golden. So as you can see, this butter has come up to a nice simmer. We're just trying to boil off all of the water. And then what we're gonna do is kill the heat and start skimming off all of the milk solids. So we're left with pure butter fat, which is gonna give us some really nice flavor without leaving any of the solids behind that'll kind of cook onto the turkey and not look so pretty. 
You can also take this one step further and make yourself some brown butter. That's always nice on some turkey. Now what we're gonna do is pour this out, leaving all the milk solids that have floated to the bottom, at the bottom, and just keep the beautiful top layer. And I'm going through a strainer here just to make sure if anything's too chunky, I'll catch it. And as we get down to the bottom, you can see them all floating to the bottom. That's all the milk solids we're gonna leave behind. And now we're left with some beautiful clarified butter. Another really great benefit of clarified butter is that it's got a much higher smoke point now that all the milk solids are taken out. So you can now use this for deep fry, or getting really hot searing a steak in and you're not gonna burn it and turn brown like you would with regular butter. Beautiful. To help build layers of flavor and reinforce the flavors that we have already used, I'm gonna infuse this here clarified butter with some herbs. Thyme sprigs, some sage leaves, and some rosemary. We're just gonna let these bloom, kind of fry up in there, make sure this butter tastes extra tasty. And while I'm at it, I'm also gonna add some duck fat to the party because I've got some on hand and I figure, hey, might as well. Ooh, -hoo, looking nice. Very hot. So now what we're gonna do is pour this beautiful duck fat herb mixture, clarified butter right on top. And we're just gonna let it kind of cook in the flavorful butter on the pit until it comes up to a temperature of 155 degrees. And we're gonna baste it periodically while it cooks. While this turkey is finishing cooking up, we might as well start frying up some bacon because I've got full intentions on making a turkey sandwich when this turkey is all said and done. Oh, so crispy. Oh, I love bacon. Yes. Definitely went a little overkill with the uh, amount of butter, but pfft, never gonna hear me complaining about too much butter. So it's been about 45 minutes, almost an hour, and this here turkey booby is right at 155 degrees. We've been basting it every now and then for the last 45 minutes, and now it's time to wrap it up, put a little butter in this foil, and let it rest. Pour some herbaceous butter in there. Wrap it up. So wrapped it up top side down to help really get all that butter in there. Make sure this comes out nice and juicy and super flavorful. Mmm. <sighs> well, you know I'm gonna put some of that herby butter on these buns. Come on. All right, after letting this turkey breast rest down to a manageable temperature, Right now it's around 140 degrees or so. Again, this turkey breast was pretty uh, pretty well mangled, which is a little unfortunate, but we take what we can get. Ooh, it's so tender. Yes, I do have a link for this knife in the description down below. Luckily when you're slicing up turkey, there's not much of a grain you have to follow more, but ooh, nice and juicy, very tender, pulls right apart. Oh, gotta love smoked turkey. Ooh, so good. I think we gotta give this a shot real quick. Mm. Mm hmm. The salt is right there. Nice texture from the pepper, garlicky, herbaceous from all those lovely herbs in the herb butter. And as soon as you slice this, you wanna put it right back in that herb butter. That way it stays nice and juicy. Oh, can't go wrong. I definitely lost some bark on the uh, turkey breast here. I think I may have buttered it up a little too soon before the bark really set in this area, but having a little extra butter on your turkey has never, uh, never been a problem in my book. Turkey Mountain. So there you have it, y'all. That's how you smoke yourself a beautiful turkey breast. That comes out nice and juicy, good amount of bark on there. So tender. Turkey is made for much more than just Thanksgiving. I think it's time to make a sandwich. Assembly of the Chud Club. Mm. Damn it. Beep, 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 beep. Gotta have some avocado. A little flaky salt just for the tomato and the cotto. Ha 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 ha. Does it really get much better than that? Mm. <laughs> Brooke, what's your favorite kind of sandwich? A turkey sandwich. With? Avocado. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. Bacon's crispy, turkey's turkey. <laughs> <laughs>
Mmm. Mm -hmm. This is something about a sandwich. You know what I mean? Hit the spot. Pee pee. Up. <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of the more hungover Fifth of Julys I've had. <laughs> that Carl. All right, guys, and that is it. That is my version of smoked turkey breast. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. If you tried this recipe for yourself, hit me up on Instagram at Chud's BBQ. I'd love to see what you guys are cooking. Let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see me cook next. If you have any questions about pit builds or anything like that, again, hit me up on Instagram. I've got a website coming soon that'll make this whole process a lot easier. You can find me on TikTok as well, at Chud's BBQ. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.